What's going on, everybody? Welcome, everyone, to the Best of Worst of, the podcast where we take the bad with the good in the world of pop culture. My name, as always, is Jason. Joining me today, you know what, Jesse? I've been meaning to say this to you for a while. You know the difference between you and me? I make this look good. <laughs> Sorry, just wanted to get Ray- that out of the way. You did, you did put on a pair of Ray-Bans, even though it's a completely audio medium. Yeah. Just for the, you know, <laughs> for the right. visual, for, for the, you know. But joining um, me, my co-host, Jesse. Yes. Uh, well, you do make this look good, Jason. You make it sound good. You have a you have a husky voice suited for radio and a face suited for radio also. Um, I do. I was going <laughs> to say, i got a husky voice and a husky pant size. But it's... <laughs> Do they still do? Is that still a pant size husky? Because I remember my brother who you was know, um, I, portly when we were I stopped kids. He always wore husky. Yeah, I stopped frequenting the boys section at Walmart mainly because of the court order. <laughs> but I, I really <laughs> don't know <laughs> if they do that I, or not. I didn't realize it was exclusively a, a boys' pant size. I thought it is like, a boys. You know, yes. It okay. Is, it's, okay. Husky. I, I don't think it exists. It's a yeah. It's a it's a well. Someone who is not husky, um, and nor have they ever been husky, is the top is the focus of our uh, podcast episode for this week. And this is a story all about the best and worst of Grammy winning, Oscar nominated, and uh, all around charisma machine, Willard Carroll Smith Jr., otherwise known as Will Smith. Wow, I had no idea that was his name. That's interesting. Yeah, Willard. Oh, just, I think on the show it's William. Is his is his the Will Smith stands for William Smith, but I, yeah. in real life it's Will, Willard Carroll Smith, uh, Jr. So uh, there, so there was two different sets of parents who thought that was a good name for a boy growing up in West Philadelphia. Um, <laughs> he has been a relevant figure across. Well, not across quite yet, but in five different decades. Isn't that weird to think about? It is odd. Eighties, nineties, the aughts, tens, now the twenties. Okay, I'm I'm going to pick nits just a bit. <laughs> okay. I don't think the twenties have begun, and I would also say he is not relevant. Now, I, he is still very relevant, but just not as relevant as he was. Okay. We'll get into it. That's what this episode is for. Right, we'll do it. We'll <laughs> um, do it. Well, let's get this podcast flipped turned upside down, Jason, and uh, <laughs> start off with our uh, favorite section. That favorite section would be fun facts. I didn't have anything to... I didn't know what to do there. I liked that, actually. It was very... It was straightforward. Um, very matter of fact, um, which I appreciate. You know, it was It was um, me being Uncle Phil. Fun yeah. facts. <laughs> that was it. That's, you would, you would make a good Uncle Phil, like a uh, like in. You got the stature, you've got the kind of demeanor. You're sort of serious, but you got a silly side. Like yeah. I can see you identifying really well with him as a father. Yes, yes. I. Uh, you know what? In the uh, the Fresh Prince remake, I'm gonna be. I, I should be Uncle Phil. It's. You know what? Let's do it as a YouTube show. Yeah, although you also have the snarkiness of a Jeffrey, the butler. Oh, I do. But, well, well, we'll combine the characters. Oh, yeah, that makes sense. And Uncle Phil was a judge on the show, and you love judging oh, things and people. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> it's this kind is, of a match made in heaven. all of my favorite things. <laughs> um, but as far as uh, Willard Carroll Smith is concerned, he started his career as a hip-hop artist, as uh, I'm sure most of us know along with his good friend Jeffrey DJ Jazzy Jeff Towns, um, whom he met uh, by chance um, at a house party in 1985. Um, uh, I think uh, Jeff, Jazzy Jeff, had a uh, was doing, was like the DJ at that party and had a couple of uh, like hip-hop artists, rappers with him, performing with him, and they needed a hype man, so they someone introduced him to Willard Carroll Smith, and he, uh, <laughs> I'm going to call him that, though. Oh, but um, and brought him on stage, and they just really hit it off. And of course, uh, they uh, went on to see some pretty great success there in the late '80s. Um, they won two Grammys together. Will Smith himself has won uh, four Grammys total, two with Jazzy Jeff, two solo. Um, 
and yeah, prominent. So that's really where his start is. And I think, uh, like I said, I think obviously a lot of people know it, especially people in our age group. But I think it is something we forget because he has really gone on to do many things, and he is a bit of a renaissance man. Um, and uh, yeah, but those uh, that early uh, Fresh Prince and Jazzy Jeff stuff is, uh, I think, kind of holds up. It's fun. It's got a nostalgic feel to it. It does. I think they were um, product of its era. They, no, they were definitely a product of its era, and I, I don't, I think it took them a while, um, or maybe it took him a while musically to, kind of, maybe towards the later '90s in the movie tie-in stuff to to figure out mm-hmm. uh, how to cross over into the pop music from what they were doing at the beginning. Um, yeah, I always found it very fresh. Um, compared to, <laughs> you know, that's the term that I use. Well, that's I, yeah. I call everything fresh. Um, I found their music fresh and kind of jazzy. I I, know. You know, I, I, I think those are two perfect adjectives for it. <laughs> um, uh, no, they were doing like, uh, all right, this is, this is dad vibes happening here. Sure. Okay. It was family friendly it was clean ish yeah. it wasn't nwa you know what i'm saying like right from yeah, the same public time enemy or, or public something en- yeah. yeah and so yeah i think they i th- i think it took them a while and maybe i'm not sure they ever got the respect from the f- the full community uh of mm. of rap music but yeah um i you know they had they had a couple of hits and uh i think some of it holds up pretty good yeah, like I said, I think in the same way that, you know, maybe like, you know, like I said, it is a time capsule, but I think it holds up better than, say, like, uh, can't touch this or something. You know what I mean? Like, there's more skill there, I think. I mean, Will Smith is a great rapper, I think. And to your point, I think it's, we kind of forget that a little bit because he is kind of a, not a novelty act, but his always song, you know, like you said, in his solo career, most of his songs are tying in with movies and stuff, and there's this uh, um, uh, wholesomeness to it. But as far as skill as a rapper, I mean, he's he's good, and I like those some of those old uh, Fresh Prince Jazzy, Jazzy Jeff songs. We do know that Eminem does not care for Eminem for, for um, excuse me for Will Smith's solo music because uh, I don't know if you recall that lyric in is it in his first Eminem's first song, um, his first hit, but he says something about Will Smith not having to cuss in his raps to sell records, but Eminem does. But I he, do, yeah, yeah. It's, I, I, but I do, so forget him and forget you too. <laughs> that's yeah, the, that's that's we'll what say, it says. That's, that's how it goes. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, I, for, I forgot about but, that. Yeah, that's in his. Uh, is that in? I'm I'm Slim Shady. Yes, I'm the real shady. <laughs> All you other Slim Shadies are just imitating. So won't the real? All right, please. Stop. I can. I will stop. I will stop. <laughs> I could hear the jorts and white New Balances on you, <laughs> um, as I'm sitting here wearing a pair of jorts. Um, but I'm a dad, so it's issued. <laughs> That's what they you get when you. A lot of people don't know that when you have a child, you get a big hospital bill and you get a pair of jorts. You do. You do get jorts. Um, I can barely move in my jorts now after <laughs> all these years. Um, I was actually. This is a very non sequitur, but you brought up jorts. Um, sure. Saw something online I did not believe, um, and my children thought it was hilarious. Um, okay. They are janties. Is that a real thing? Or is I, it like it a can't novelty be. thing? It has to be a novelty thing. Are, they, um, they swore that it was real. They saw it somewhere online, and I was uh, I was giving them grief over it. But Yeah, I, I uh, am a frequent jort wearer during the... Uh, but not, I would say cool jorts if that makes sense not like baggy dad no, jorts no, like no. these are like cut off jean shorts no, but not like yes. not like not like village people cut off like you, not like that short no you but, you rock a very stylish jort okay thank you you, I appreciate you rock that. a jort like you're in a um uh, a san diego surfer band in yeah, 1994 so, yeah. Right, that's you usually have a pair of like slip-on bands yes. with them. No, you're 100 like right. You're 100 percent right. Um, but the uh, uh, our buddy Wes, who does uh, who did our um, and does our podcast artwork, um, he actually tagged me in that uh, 
the picture of the Janties. Yeah, okay. Um, yes. saying that, that's yeah. where I saw so, it. I am that's aware. That's where I saw it. Okay, I knew I saw. They it seem online to be somewhere. a real product, but it seems like something you get at Spencer's. Yeah. Now I, I'll let you know when I get up here. I want to compare my <laughs> jorts. Um, so the jorts I have are so long <laughs> they go below the knee. This is how old right. they are. Okay, because you're got to mm-hmm. remember. I kind of came of age in that late '90s, early 2000s. Yeah. In the, do you remember the painter's jeans that had oh, that little yes. loop on the side? Yeah, the, the hammer, hammer loop. Yes. So mm-hmm. my my jorts have have all the painter pockets. Yeah. And the loop. Yeah. Um, anyway. Yeah, I had no. I had some of those. Um, They're baggy in the all loop, the wrong places. The, exactly. Had the loop for the hammer, but really all it was carrying was regret. <laughs> 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 anyway wow okay back to uh will let's, smith let's talk so about will um smith. so he, a man not known for wearing jorts but a very stylish man and uh set many trends um in his uh, television show that he was in why don't you tell us did. about that Jason? Uh, from 1990 to 1996 some of you may remember he was in the fresh prince of bel-air i look i think an underrated tv show um yeah it's on like, uh, for those of you i don't know anybody is uh, an HBO Max subscriber who listens, but uh, if you have access through your provider or you sign up, uh, Fresh Prince is uh, every episode available on HBO Max, and it uh, really it's, yeah. So my family is working their way through family sitcoms, and okay. uh, right, that's a good one. That's that's coming up very soon. Um, I think the order right now we need to. It might get moved up. We're we're still on Cosby. I'm not okay. informing the children about post-1992 Cosby, but right now yeah. they're loving it. It's excellent. Uh, we were going to do show. Growing Pains next, and then we were going to okay. do Dick Van Dyke, Ooh. and then that's a pivot. That's that's a yeah. pivot, but they loved I Love Lucy, so I'm like, I think okay. we can do I it. I Love Lucy is great. I Love Lucy is better than Dick Van Dyke, though. It I is. I think so, anyway. It, it is. So I think we're going to skip, and we're going to pivot to... Uh, Fresh Prince, because I think my my son being thirteen, like I was right in the wheelhouse of ten yeah. ten to fifteen when this came on, and I I've seen mm-hmm. every episode of Fresh Prince. Um, yes, so it's it's excellent. He uh, the role that he was reportedly hesitant to take as the um, character. We're talking again about Will Smith, not your son. Just want to <laughs> no, be clear yeah, there be clear. on the pronouns we were using. All right, so <laughs> yes, Will Smith was uh, reluctant to take this role um, or hesitant to take the role of Will Smith, which is interesting uh, because he had Mm -hmm. never really acted before. However, he was convinced by the creators who had built the idea around him. And then I thought this fact was very interesting. Um, Smith was in $2.8 million worth of debt to the IRS due to his extravagant spending in the late eighties. And uh, you know, it's, it's really tough you have to have a barber on retainer to keep a fade that tight so yeah it's there's he just, had a good one I'm yeah telling he you, did, dude, it's perfect uh, that's what i'm telling you it's crazy if you go back and watch those episodes of fresh prince like it's all very the style of the early 90s is very dated you know it's like oh, yeah. you're getting you're you're in the you're still getting a little bit of the 80s but you're the 90s are kind of getting their own mm-hmm. sort of t- you know fashion sense in there but he still always looks so cool. Like every like he you go does. back and watch like Saved by the Bell, everyone looks ridiculous. Oh, but Will Smith awful. has so much charisma. His hairstyles, the no. the the clothes he wears, like the, the remember he always wore the school blazer inside out. No, looks it was my favorite awesome. thing. He looks amazing. <laughs> awesome. He's he yeah. is so I think he's got this thing that um a, a couple of people in the world or in life have that they are unbelievably comfortable in their own skin and in who they are as a person. Now that may or may not be true, but it's, it's something that I definitely feel he is confident in who he is. And I think that's going to show through in kind of, kind of some of the more things we talk about, but uh, I'm trying to think of other people that would fall into this. I think Shaquille O'Neal is one of these people. Uh, Yeah. Most large people like Shaquille O'Neal or uh, you think of an actor who got as big and as famous as Will Smith, they are tainted by that or adjusted by that or um, yeah. or they they almost seclude themselves from the world mm-hmm. or they, they their, their personality changes. I feel like these guys 
are the same people they are today as yeah. they were 30 years ago. And I, I was trying to think of other people that fell into that category, but I was kind of at a loss. Those were the first two that came to mind that I'm just like, these these are the most comfortable people in their own skin. I, I'm a little jealous of it, honestly. Yeah. Uh, you maybe say like a Paul Rudd, maybe. Oh, yes. Yes. No, no. A Paul Rudd. He's one of those where he's just like, he's okay. He's a, He's fine being kind of the butt of the joke. He's fine being, you know, kind of wearing a lot of different hats as far as what he does in his roles, but it yeah. always has this same carefree sort of, you know, just this real char- charisma charge sort of feel to it that comes across. And yeah, Will Smith is definitely like that. However, in uh, the uh, <laughs> early 90s, he was um, about all he could afford was charisma, because um, like you said, he was miserably in debt to the IRS. And it actually took several years of doing the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air and having his wages garnished by the IRS before he really started making any money off of the show. That's um, interesting. Which I, I think, I want to say it was like, I read it was like season three before he they stopped garnishing his wages. Wow. And I think they were, ta- they were taking a sizable portion of them. Um, but, uh, yeah, so, and it was also during that time um, when he was broke, but working and famous, and you know, I think I've read some sort of blurb from him where he was talking about like he's like it's really it's a really weird experience to be world famous and completely broke. He's like it's just hard to explain, you know. But like, and I could imagine that would be <laughs> a, a weird world to live. But um, during that time, he became uh, sort of obsessed with this idea of becoming, as he put it in his own words, the biggest movie star in the world. And, you know, he uh, pretty much succeeded, (laughs) at least at one point. Um, He is the only actor to have eight consecutive films gross over $100 million in the domestic box office. He had 11 consecutive films gross over $150 million international and eight consecutive films in which he starred open at number one at the domestic box office. So this, um, this is very yeah. interesting to me. So I, I, this is one of those facts that I've known for a while that I, I've just found remarkable that he literally made a decision that I want to be, and I'm going to, I'm going to kind of forge the path of my career that I want to be in blockbuster films that make enormous amounts of money. Yeah. And I think he had done research. I, the story that I always heard was that he went and did research about some of the highest grossing films of all time. And they were alien movies and they were mm-hmm. summer blockbuster, you know, th- these type of things. And so that's what he sought out. And that's where you get things like, um, you know, uh, Independence Day and, and yeah. going forward, all those big things that he had kind of from that mid like you talk that big mid nineties run to 11 consecutive films that grossed over 150 million. That's insane. Yeah. Especially if you look at the time frame and when his movies were coming out, I mean, this was mostly, you know, a run through and we will definitely go through that run here in a bit, but, um, from the mid nineties into the mid two thousands, really, um, where, you know, that was, I mean, you know, that movies didn't quite make money the same way they do now, you know, so like we've touched on before, where every movie makes a billion dollars, it feels like any big mm-hmm. tentpole sort of movie. So, I mean, at the time, and also if you look at his, um, if you go back and look at his filmography, you know, he was a movie star in the era of really before you had everything's an adaptation, everything's a reboot, everything's a sequel. Like these were, he was in a lot of original story ideas. Some not so good, some great, but he's not in a lot of like franchise movies, you know, or like not movies, not adaptations, you know. Um, and uh, so, I mean, it's it's remarkable that he seemed to, at least for a time, have an eye for this movie. This and like I said, a lot of more original ideas. This movie's going to be a hit. I want to be in it. Um, now he didn't always know that because there are some pretty. Uh, sub- um, substantial um, roles that he turned down Um, before we get to and we're going to go through a few of those real quick before we get to that um, what uh, here's our fill in the blank for you for the week Jason okay Will Willard Carroll Smith Jr.'s films have grossed how many dollars in the box office blank amount of dollars is this international total I I believe so 
um, three point two billion. Eight billion dollars. What? Eight billion. Yeah. Now I'm assuming that's including movies he maybe didn't necessarily star in. But let's be honest. How often do you see Will Smith in a supporting role? So he pretty much stars in every movie that he's in. Um, so yeah, eight billion dollars. Eight billion. Um, he's only made like twenty one films. Yeah, I mean, he just had an eye for... I mean, he had a run. Like I said, we're going to get into it when we get into the best, which we'll get into in a moment. Before that, we love would-be casting. Tell us about some of those uh, would-be castings for Will Smith. These were roles he was offered or considered for, but turned down. Yeah, offered or considered for. Now, I knew a couple of these um, that that are kind of iconic now, but the one Mm -hmm. is that he was offered Neo in The Matrix, and and he turned it down... Um, I think it worked out to, for the better. Yeah, he turned it down to do Wild Wild West. <laughs> now that's ridiculous. Yeah, which and to your point, yeah, this one's a little bit famous now. I know from Will Smith, this kind of a real, a real positive, almost like inspirational speaker sort of mentality. You know, like he's mm-hmm. real a lot of positive affirmations and stuff. But he has said that that is one of the only ones he actually regrets. Like. Most of the other ones, like, he's been up for roles where he's like, eh, it just wasn't right for me. So be it. But he said this one he does kind of regret. Um, It's a different movie. Yeah. There's more comedic. I don't think he can make it and it not have some comedic elements. But yeah, um, it's almost like the opposite of the Back to the Future casting where they, yeah. they went back and cast... Uh, Michael J. Fox to get a little more comedic. It's almost like the opposite of that. And you got this very serious uh, performance out of Keanu. That's uh, yeah. that's interesting. Um, the other one was that he was offered Django in Django Unchained. Um, I could see that working. Um, I still like Jamie Fox in that role. Yeah, me too. Um, Will Smith again. It's he's such a. There's, now he can do more subtle, nuanced stuff, but he's such a big personality that his role is such a broken yeah. man the role of Django is such a it has to be such a sort of broken man that comes out of that I agree I, would have, I think it would have been hard to picture Will Smith in that really what? sort of broken you know um, role like you know before um, before he starts getting his revenge and stuff you know he's, like I think he the third act of that movie he's got Will Smith all over it the first two acts would be hard to picture yeah yeah no I agree that's my problem or the more I think about it, he's imposing from a personality standpoint, but he's also imposing physically. And yeah. so I, I felt like that needed a less imposing figure um, yeah. in the, in that, in that role. Um, right. Cause he's, actually, he's a big fellow who's bulked up in the last 10 years. Oh yeah. 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 He's yeah, since he's Ali real for some, really since Ali yeah. he's bulked up. Stayed in good shape. And actually, uh, if I recall correctly, it actually it wasn't not even so much that he was considered for the role of Django. Quentin Tarantino wrote the role with Will Smith in mind, offered it to him. They sat down, and had a couple hour conversation about it, and ultimately, by Will Smith's own admission, the reason he didn't take it was because he said he's not. He said the movie's called Django Unchained, but he's not the main character. He's like, and if I'm going to be in that role, he's like, you know, he's like, I wanted to be the main character, and I wanted to get to kill the bit, the big bad guy at the end and stuff. He's like, and he said I. I guess he felt like it was more of an on, you know, more of a, a two hander with uh, Christoph Waltz's. Um, it is, uh, it is Schultz, Doctor Schultz, yeah. and it is. But Will Smith, by again, by his own admission, was he, and it seemed it didn't seem like he was being, you know, too, uh, like it wasn't so ego driven necessarily. He just was admitting he's like it would have been hard for me to take that role and kind of share the spotlight with this, you know, other person, um, in a movie called Django Unchained. So sure. Um, but, uh, but yeah, um, that would have been interesting to see. Um, it's kind of up there with, like, uh, as far as Tarantino castings, Adam Sandler as the Bear Jew, Donnie Donowitz in, um, in uh, Inglorious Bastards. That wow, was, I cannot see that. He wrote the role with Adam Sandler in mind, apparently, but Adam Sandler was t- tied up to funny people and couldn't do it. I think it was funny people. Some movie. Yeah. He, he had scheduling conflicts and couldn't do it. And uh, so he... It went to Eli Roth, but I would have loved to have seen that. Like that would have been really fun to see. Um, I would like to see somewhere in an alternate universe, uh, Django 
Unchained, starring Will Smith. Yeah. And starring Carlton as Calvin Candy. <laughs> <laughs> um, this one I can't see as much. He was considered for Superman um, in Superman Returns. I'm assuming that's the Brian Singer Superman that yeah. before they decided to make it a direct sequel and mm-hmm. thinking uh thinking of kind of reinventing that character um i is it surprising I, he's been in a dc comic book movie um mm-hmm. he was in suicide squad but i feel like if his career is 10 years later mm-hmm. or if um comic book movies start earlier I see like Will Smith become Will Smith is Black Panther. Right? Yeah. Like he's he gets one of those spots. Yeah, or I always thought he would have been good as uh Luke Cage, which was made into one of those um Yeah. Uh, no, he would Netflix, you know, cuz again it's imposing, you know, just a big imposing But I'm thinking uh, superhero. 19 if, you know, if if Black Panther's 20 years earlier, if it comes out in 1998, mm-hmm. Who else yeah, are you if, casting? Well, if you had to, if MCU came out ten years earlier, let's say it that way, and this the the current state of the cinema is what it is now, let's say that was happening in 1998, yeah. Will Smith would have absolutely got grabbed up in one of these machines, and he would have been great for it, and it would have been oh, it would have been awesome. Definitely had the charisma and the star power to carry it. Um, the same way you know, like Robert Downey Jr. carried Iron Man. Or oh, he could have been. A, he could have been Iron Man. He could have been. Oh, he, Captain ooh, America. Been, yeah, Iron I mean, Man would have been a good one. Um, yeah, oh yeah, because he could have played it's that. Such a, yeah, that's what I think about so much. You know, not even you know, aside from anything of like, well, what race was the character in the comic book? All of that. We're past all that point, obviously, and rightfully so. I mean, if you need yeah. proof, go watch the awful Daredevil movie from 2003. That had a brilliantly cast Michael Clark Duncan as Kingpin. I oh, yeah. love that. That was the best part of that movie. Um, but it comes down to really, I think, more personality. And that's the, like Superman. I have a hard time picturing because I just can't picture him as the stoic Clark Kent. You know? No, that's and right. Kind of he's much really more reserved, an, sort of. Yeah, he's yeah. much more an Iron Man. Uh, yeah. Even like a Captain America, he would be a little too. I think you know it. it that's that's a more it's straight laced character. Too straight He's laced. someone with some some fun to it. Yeah, he could be Thor. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That any of that kind of stuff. Actually got the build for it too. Yeah. Um, and then these. Um, go ahead. No, yeah, these last, last two. These last two are really interesting to me because I knew that a Star Is Born had been in production or had been in the churning through the cycle for years to remake it, but the fact that he was uh, kind of offered or involved with two different versions of trying to remake a star is born um yeah one starring whitney houston which um i can see that and yeah. one starring j-lo and i can also see that yeah it's interesting so, that neither one of those got made yeah i would again like either one of those i could see being really good um especially i think the j-lo one i'm a little more intrigued with just because that role assuming she would be in sort of the uh the starlet role obviously unless they maybe i don't know maybe they were going to gender flip it or something and will smith is the sort of starlet (laughs) so to speak um but if they were going with you know will smith's in the sort of mentor role and j-lo would be then i think of j-lo and selena and i'm like oh that would be she was she's great in that i love that movie well so I, i think and i can see that movie as more of a hip hop pop focused movie where he's yeah. kind of an aging hip hop star who's trying to get this, uh, you know, more as as opposed yeah. to the kind of Americana, uh, right. country focused, um, you know, uh, pop Bradley leaning Cooper one Bradley got, yeah. Cooper one that we got. Yeah, yeah, it's still a good movie, but interesting. Yeah, yeah. So speaking of Will Smith movies, um, what would you say are your favorites? I know my favorite for sure is what we're going to talk about in best of, so I'm going to not mention that one, but. Oh really? Yeah, and, that's my favorite for sure. Interesting. Um, I would say my favorite. Um, I, I'm gonna go with "I Am Legend" is up there pretty good. I think for his yeah. performance overall, that's a good movie. Um, the mm, 
the Independence Day is pretty good. Uh, mm-hmm. I I like the I like the earlier stuff. I'm gonna say I'm not a huge like I've seen a lot of Will Smith movies, but I'm not gonna say I'm a huge Will Smith fan. Um, yeah. You know, I think when he's been when he's been at his best, uh, mm-hmm. I think the movies are too popcorn for me. When he's doing all yeah. of his best things, and then the more awards focused stuff gets a little saccharine for me, like Pursuit of Happiness yeah. and that kind of stuff. It just it's just too much. I'm gonna go with the. Uh, I'm gonna go with I Am Legend and I Robot are my favorite. Okay, ma- my favorite movies of his. Well, yeah. So I'm I'm about right on board there with you. So what I think where I fall with it is it's hard for me to think of kind of my favorite. Well, like I think I Am Legend, aside from the one we're about to discuss, I Am Legend is probably my favorite. And I think for the reason that you just kind of touched on, I just thought about this. It's because it is a popcorn movie. And he gets to do some of that, but because it's the role asks something completely different from him than we've gotten before, so you also get some of this nuanced sort of you know, you get his more his acting chop sort of stuff that you get in Pursuit of Happiness, collateral yeah. or yeah, you get kind um, of the best of both worlds there. Yeah, um, and uh, wait, is that the thing of that movie? The movie about the NFL concussions? What's concussion? That concussion. What, I'm, what is collateral? Collateral. What is he made one called Collateral Beauty. Um, but oh. Collateral is Jamie Foxx and, um, and oh, Tom yeah. Cruise okay. in a Michael Mann movie. Oh, yeah, the, the taxi cab movie. Yeah. Um, but, uh, but yeah, but like I Am Legend, he gets to kind of do a little bit of both. It's a big movie. He gets to do all the star power stuff. Although it's, and like I said, just having Will Smith, who was so charismatic, play, you know, not having anyone to really play off of was really kind of a bold choice. I love that movie. Um, I Robot for I think it gets forgotten a little bit, and I think it got I think critically it wasn't super well received. Very different than the story, or, um, but I love that movie. I think it's again I think it gets a it's, little bit of the no. same thing. The message is it beats you over the head with its message a little bit, but it does. Um, but for two thousand four, it's, a fun movie. it's good CGI. Yeah. For the for the time frame, I mean it's all CGI Alan, has aged. Uh, Alan, Alan Tudyk, Tudyk. yes, yeah. is great. And uh, I recently rewatched that with the kids. I just think it's it, it wasn't that a Philip K. Dick novel. I yeah, robot. Yeah. I, they've mm-hmm. really done some good. Or, or no, is that or is that Isaac Asimov? I'm looking it up because I don't know. Oh, it was Isaac Asimov. I, yeah. I I I was. We just watched Minority Report this week, which I think was yeah. a Philip K. Dick novel. They're very yeah. similar in these kind of futuristic looks at uh at, mm-hmm. at the conversion or confluence of uh of technology in this kind of yeah. prescient uh black mirror sort of way that they yeah. that they both looked at um but no you're right it, it was isaac asimov I, I i think those uh i think that movie is is um really underrated no i agree okay. very yeah. underrated it was one of those ones that it would always pop up on FX, and I'd be like, "Sweet!" <laughs> like, and not watch half of it. Yeah. Um, What's your- yeah. Uh, what? Well, one thing I was gonna say was it's hard for me though, like, because I can think of like, well, I'll think of a movie. Like, is that my favorite Will Smith movie? Like, I think of Independence Day. Which there's a lot nostalgic wise that I love about that movie, you know. But as anyone who grew up in the '90s did, to some degree, you have a soft spot for it. I mean, but. I'm like, well, that's not my favorite movie of his because the movie's not that great. But Will Smith is fantastic in it. So to your yes. point, like, it's hard to separate the two sometimes. I'm like, oh, Will Smith is great in that movie, but that movie's not really that good. Like, I like Hitch a lot, but just because I like Will Smith in it a lot, and I like what he's kind of doing in that, and I do like him and Kevin James' chemistry and their back and forth is is pretty good. The movie. It hasn't aged super well. It's pretty misogynistic now, but, um, but the uh, at least at times. But the uh, but I liked that movie a lot when it came out. But when I think about it now, I'm like, well, that movie's not that great. But Will Smith is pretty great in it, and he that's is. what I happens thinks I think happens a lot. Yeah, is that he he elevates a movie to where you almost think it's a good movie. <laughs> yeah, I agree. I agree. Um, 
What about from a music perspective? What do you, what are your what are your thoughts on <laughs> on his music? What's your favorite uh, favorite track? Favorite favorite album? Uh, I've never listened to a full album. Yeah, no, I haven't either. Um, <laughs> but uh, I, I'm gonna have to go with Miami, I think, or uh, maybe the Men in Black tie-in song. Yeah, um, they're both. Uh, they're, those are both pretty solid. They're both. They're both good. You know what's underrated about his music career? Um, the use of the plays on his name in the titles of the albums. Uh-huh. So we have <laughs> Willennium. Big Willie style and Willennium. Yeah. Um, which I just think those are both power moves. Just, yeah. <laughs> just absolutely. You know what's a power move? Power move is having a uh, Cuban cigar and not lighting it because you're just rocking it for the look, as he says he does in Miami. <laughs> yes um that's, miami that's a power move the, the the songs that came off a of big willie style I, i'll just say my favorite the one that you think of it's miami or getting jiggy with it i well yeah i don't love getting jiggy with it but it's the one that's in my head the most if i think about this um yeah uh, miami is very singable as well but um i think i think jiggy's a better song so yeah it's... Yeah. As far as the tie-ins go, again, it's one of those situations where a lot of times the tie-in song was better than the movie, as you get with the Wild Wild oh, West. Oh, Wild Wild West is a it's it's, it's a, a great song. It is a banging <laughs> song. It's better yeah, than Drew the Men in Hill Black in there song. Coming on the hook. Yeah. Yeah, man, that's tough. Like I think Men in Black is a better performance from Will Smith, but I think that uh, Wild Wild West is a is just like a banger of a song. Like it's awesome. Yeah. Um, I tell you what, movie tie-in song, uh, song is not good. Um, the uh, one for Hitch, I think it's called Switch. I think mm. um, that one's not very good. Um, and uh, there's a, there's like a version of um, a Friend Like Me he did for Aladdin that's pretty solid. Um, I forgot about that. Yeah. Let me mention that. As far as favorite movies, I really liked that Aladdin remake. Like, more so than... I, that's probably my favorite Disney live-action remake. It is... Um, because it tries to do something different. I agree. It's not a shot-for-shot. Shot. It's that or the Cinderella, which you probably haven't seen or may not have seen. I don't think I've seen uh, it. Yeah. I like that. I like both of those because they're not shot-for-shot shot remakes of the original, and they're trying yeah. to do something different. And I remember the the buzz around Will Smith's performance was like, oh my gosh, Will Smith is going to be the genie? How cheesy is this? And then the first yeah. couple stills of him with the, the top knot ponytail and the yeah. and all in blue, and it was just like, this is not going to work. And the way they kind of did it and him putting his style on some of that, those are it was really well done. He's good he as the genie. He did great. Yes. Yeah. yeah. He did great. It, his, he, he's got some genuinely funny moments. They definitely let it just, in the same way that when they animated the genie and they cast Robin Williams for the animated Aladdin, um, he uh, they they very much based the character around like you kind of do your thing and do what kind of comic style is per you know works for you and then we'll make it work within the movie. I feel like they did that a little bit with Will Smith too, where they were like you know we obviously we don't want you to try to do Robin Williams, so you go ahead and do what work the Will Will Smith as a genie and you know we'll make sure it works within the context of the movie and it definitely does and he's he's the best part of that movie i think um and i was kind of on board with it like i'm not <laughs> trying to be that person who was like oh i was definitely like i always loved it. i knew it was going to be a great decision i was nervous but because of just i love the original aladdin and robin williams performance so i was nervous but like when they cast it i was like well, that makes perfect sense because he's just again he's pure charisma and he's pure energy and that's what you need the genie to be. Uh, that's what you need i, I would think yeah. i was most concerned about the director like i was oh, like what is guy yeah. Ritchie doing in this and even the first 10 minutes i was like what is happening i can't handle this yeah uh and yeah, after that like, it settles like, in it's good it does and they like it doesn't hit all of its shots and it definitely misses some things but I would rather see something try something different and miss than watch a shot for shot remake of Lion King. Oh my with, gosh. That Lion King is unwatchable. Know, soulless it's, animal eyes. Oh, it's awful. It's awful. Well, 
Um, um, yeah, let's go ahead and head into best of. Let's do it. Why don't you tell us, Jesse, about the best of Will Smith's filmography? Yes. Um, it is, I, oh, I forgot to put it down in the show notes. I believe it's a 92% on Rotten Tomatoes. I, I'll um, look it, up. it It is my favorite Will Smith movie. Um, and it is known as Men in Black, or MIB, I suppose, depending on, uh, even though Men in Black is the same number of syllables as MIB, so it's not really saving any time. Uh, MIB. <laughs> nobody, says, nobody says that. It is 92% really? on, uh, cool. on Rotten Tomatoes. I, uh, uh, yeah, it's Men in Black. It, it, I've never said MIB, ever. Okay, yeah. Um, yeah. Um, Men in Black. Um, it was released July 2nd, 1997. Um, it's directed by Barry Sonnenfeld, who also did the Adams Family movies um, from the early 90s. Adams Family and Adams Family Values, which are fun movies. I enjoy them. Um, MIB 2. Yeah, you know, I do say MIB 2 and MIB 3. I don't think I say Men in Black 2 and Men in Black 3. I think I do go MIB in those situations. But I'm talking about the original. Uh, I say or you Black. could do what I do and never reference them. <laughs> <laughs> Just never <laughs> Just forget that they exist. No, we. I tried to watch these with my kids. They liked the first one, and then they couldn't make it through the second one. It was so bad. Second one's not good. Johnny Knoxville and Laura Flynn Boyle. Oh, uh, it's Laura so... Flynn Boyle's an okay villain. Johnny Knoxville's annoying. Yeah. Uh, Rosario Dawson, unused, like underused. She's great. She should. They should have done more with that. But there is, again, Will Smith's good in that. Him and Tommy Lee Jones have great chemistry, and that still comes through, but the story's weak, and it's... My, um, my kids were both like, yeah. give me... I want. I love my Tommy Lee Jones, but give mm-hmm. me the Fugitive or U.S. Marshals. Yeah. God, your kids are going <laughs> to... Gosh, they're you. They're going to be you. <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah, yeah, Men in Black 2 is not great. Men in Black 3, I think, is an improvement on 2. Um, I love Josh Brolin as the young K- Agent K in that. Um, and again, Will Smith is just kind of always good in everything he does. But again, it's, it, it falters on the story and it gets a little um, too big for its britches by dealing with time travel and stuff. Anyway, um, we're talking about the first one, which is great. Uh, Barry Sonnenfeld also did, uh, like I said, he did those Men in Black sequels. He also did the movie RV with the aforementioned Robin Williams. Um, although not nearly as good of a role as Genie. <laughs> no, no. Uh, so anyway, Men in Black stars Willard Carroll Smith Jr., Tommy Lee Jones, Vincent Philip D'Onofrio, and Clorinda, or she's known professionally, Linda Fiorentino. So um, I was going with everyone's full name. Like I was <laughs> when I was writing the notes, it's like I'm gonna go Willard Carroll Smith, and then I went Tommy Lee Jones. What's Tommy Lee Jones' full name? Oh, it's Tommy Lee Jones. <laughs> like that's, it's not even. I don't even think it's Thomas Lee Jones. Like it's, his name's Tommy. Yes. From what I could, from what I found. Anyway, um, if you haven't seen Men in Black, what are you doing? Like it's it legitimately an awesome movie, um, and it tells the story of James Edwards, played by Willard Carroll Smith Jr., um, as he is recruited into uh, Men in Black, a secret agency that monitors and polices extraterrestrial life on Earth. Um, yeah. Uh, so it's. Based on a comic book series um, that premiered in 1990 and ran until like 1991, um, and uh, it really and it's based on the sort of you know of course the urban myth you know mythology uh, of these government agents, the Men in Black, who people reportedly have actually seen and met and whatnot. That basically you know government conspiracy hush up alien sightings, alien abductions, that kind of thing. Um, the comic book. Um, really only shares a premise with the movie as the comic is much, much darker. Uh, so in the movie, of course, you know, they use the neuralizer to erase people's memories um, when they've seen an alien sighting or, you know, uh, they need to need them to forget the situation. They use the neuralizer, a little flashy thingy that makes them forget. Um, they create them a new backstory. In the comic book, they just kill people. <laughs> they just shoot them in the head. Um, so... Comic is much darker, but it does feature the characters of K and J and Z, played by the late, great bank robin, <laughs> drink swilling Rip Torn. Um, Love Rip Torn. B- yeah, one of the best he's... voices ever. Yeah, <laughs> he, he does, and uh, uh, was secret like like sneaky old. He you know passed away I think last year or the year before. Sneaky old, 
Oh, sneaky no, old, no, dude. sneaky old, but his line delivery, and I mean, this yeah. is what I knew him from, but if you saw him in other, uh, yeah. it's it, it just excellent. We're not hosting an intergalactic kegger. <laughs> right. <laughs> that kind of stuff. Um, yeah, I mean, what else do you say about Men in Black? It's an awesome movie. It, um, it, no, it has a great tone. It's dark. It's funny. It's a little bit edgy. Um, you know, they, like I so said, there's some dark humor elements you know it's got the big action set pieces and sequences it's got a fantastic villain and vincent d'onofrio is edgar bug yeah um he's, he's really uh, an underrated movie villain he came back in my house but it wasn't edgar <laughs> it was yes. something wearing an edgar suit that- <laughs> so i love it that was a great impression on the sugar water. That's, you know, like, that's a great impression. <laughs> we should, that's what we should do for Halloween oh, next year at, this year at work. We should you should be the Edgar. You should walk around with um a, a cup of sugar water and I'll just walk up to you randomly and go more sugar. <laughs> you know. Um that. but uh real quick funny thing, I just saw this not too long ago. You know in that scene, okay, so the Edgar Bug has become a thing. The bug landed, killed that farmer, took his skin. And his wife, the woman you just did a spot on impression of, um, to, uh, is talking to Will Smith and Tommy Lee Jones as J and K and telling them the story. And if you watch that scene, Will Smith, she's made them lemonade, and Will Smith takes a sip of it and then like spits it back into the glass and sets it down. And it's kind of like, okay. You know, it almost feels like it's improvised. Like, he just was like, I gotta do something funny here. Yeah. There, she had no sugar in the lemonade. Oh. Is what it, the joke is. Is that she had, the Edgar bug had, you She'd know, he comes inside. and the sugar. And the sugar and the sugar water for the Edgar bug. Um, and I was like, that's really a clever little detail. Um, but anyway, Will Smith's fantastic in the movie. If you haven't seen it, I mean, I'm not gonna sit there and, you know, like go over through the whole movie with it. But Will Smith's great in it. It's great chemistry. It's a fun movie. Um, great chemistry between him and Tommy Lee Jones and like a, you know, odd sort of couple pairing. But um, the movie completely holds up. I mean, it, it really does. I need to rewatch. I haven't seen it in a while. But it was one of those movies in the same way I mentioned with X Men. I watched it a lot as a kid. Um, I watched uh, Men in Black a lot as a kid. I had it on VHS and, uh, just it was i was really into aliens and stuff there for a while when i got into x files and things like that and i watched that and like close encounters of a third kind like all summer one like when i was like 13 um <laughs> it explains so much of my behavior it does i was gonna i was gonna do nerd alert but i i thought i'd <laughs> save I'd, i would just save it it's... please i can't I can't take you bashing me again for not being a sports star. Um, <laughs> but, uh, anyway, um, so some would-be casting from this I thought was interesting. Uh, Chris O'Donnell um, turned down the role of Jay because the whole recruitment to sort of a secret world-saving team thing was too similar to his role as Robin. That's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. Batman Forever. <laughs> This is the dumbest thing I've ever heard. Chris O'Donnell, <laughs> oh. take this role. Are you yeah. crazy? Hey, man, he's going to have a guest arc on some USA show. He's doing fine for himself, okay? Uh, um, Chris O'Donnell is an <laughs> underrated that guy from yeah. 1990s uh, yeah. cinema. Uh, I, well, he plays, if, yeah, if, if, just to touch on it, he plays Robin in the Batman Forever and the Batman and Robin movie. But yeah, apparently he turned down this iconic role and you know again you say like it's hard to say well gosh he would have been such a big star had a bigger star had he done this probably not because had he been in this the movie wouldn't have been as well received because will smith is a big part of the success of this movie so uh, i agree i agree you know um but um uh, some other ones uh david schwimmer was also considered until it was decided that two cockroaches in human skin suits would simply be too many in one movie <laughs> <laughs> Um, you cannot cast that lifeless husk of a man <laughs> as the lead. It, I don't think he's ever, nobody's ever tried him as the lead, right? I mean, he's played sidekicks or he's done a few other things. David Schwimmer is yeah. not a leading man. 
No, yeah. I, no, I don't even think he didn't even he didn't even get like his one shot that Hollywood usually gives you. You know, usually Hollywood gives you like, okay, Jay Baruchel, we're gonna give you one go at this. If you mess it up, we're never giving you another one. And That's that right. happened. David Schwimmer never even got that, but um, and maybe for good reason. But um, anyway, um, for the role of K, uh, the role was offered to Clint Eastwood, obviously, um, who turned it down. I mean, that just makes sense, and that would have worked, I think. I don't think the humor would have come across quite as good. Tommy Lee Jones has got some pretty good deadpan humor. Oh yeah, yeah, like t- underrated. Yeah, the, the 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 two of them together are what make this movie more so than the. Imagine than the setting. sorry. Imagine this movie being Men in Chris, Black starring Chris Clint Eastwood and, and Clint, no, Clint no, and David Swimmer and Clint David Eastwood. David Swimmer. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah, um, that was yeah that would that, the completely different movie. Um, Edgar Bug, you had uh, John Turturro. I could see and it. Bruce Campbell both considered. I could see both of those working. Th- this aligns um, with what Bruce Campbell has spent the last thirty years doing in the yeah. Evil Dead world. It, like mm-hmm. I could see it, but uh, John Turturro has this kind of otherworldly gangliness and oddity. Yeah, uh, but no, Vincent D'Onofrio was perfect. In this movie. He had to be kind of a hulking sort of man, you know, and Vincent Nafrio is a big dude. And, you know, had more was known more as a dramatic actor. I think that helped, you know, help with some of the dark humor of his because it's a dark movie. I mean, there's some fairly graphic horror in it, you know, nothing. It's all off screen, but then you see like the aftermath kind of stuff. But um but it's you know, it's uh it's, it works. Every It was perfectly cast. You know, that movie, again, if that movie's Clint Eastwood and David Schwimmer, oh, no. um, it does not work. Um, anyway, um, so here's what I want to mention real quick, and then we'll head into worse stuff. So we talked earlier about his string of successes. This was the third movie in that string, and we're going to go through that string right now. I'm going to read the title of the movie and what it made in the box office, okay? Okay. Started with Bad Boys. Okay. $141 million. Whoa. ID4, $817 million. Good gracious. Mib, or Men in Black, if you will, um, $589 million. And that's Enemy 19, of the seven, $1997. Yeah. Wait a second. Enemy of the State. When we're talking about favorite movies. That's an awesome movie. Oh, no, that is, that is awesome. I forgot about that movie. Great supporting cast. Great Seth Gene Green, Hackman Jack Black, performance. Oh. Barry Pepper. Oh, no, no. Um, Excellent. Yeah, great Gene Hackman. Um, great John Voight, like great movie. Will Smith's awesome. And like everyone is great in that. Movie. That is a fantastic movie. Another one of those FX movies comes on, and I'm like, sweet. Yep. Enemy of the State, 250 million. Um, Wild Wild West, 220 million. So now Enemy of the State had a smaller budget. 250 was good. Wild Wild West, 220 million on a 180 million dollar budget. Yeah. Not good. Yeah. No. Not good. And plus. Out the butt in marketing. Yeah, and seventy five million of that is just people wanting to watch a dumpster fire. So right. like it's just at a certain point somebody's willing to throw down some money to No right. the marketing for Wild Wild West was everything. I don't even think I ever saw the movie. Like I no, I'm, I'm aware sure of I had it. A I've commemorative seen Burger King Cup or something. Oh yeah, no, I got the Burger King merch. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um but anyway, Wild Wild West, two hundred and twenty million. Then he went to Ali, which was his first Oscar nomination. So now he's mm-hmm. got some of the critical stuff. That movie made eighty-seven million, but still good. It was a smaller budget for a dramatic movie. That's good. Yeah. Men in Black Two, four hundred and forty-one million. Bad Boys Two, two hundred and seventy-three million. I Robot, three hundred and forty-seven million. This one blew my mind. Shark Tale, forgot about it. Not a good movie. Finding Nemo ripoff, I think. <laughs> um, I don't actually know which one came first, but certainly. Maybe Nemo, like a deep impact Armageddon kind no, of situation. Nemo came first, but this is not a ripoff. It's a completely different thing. It just happens to be under the sea. Yeah. Well, three hundred and sixty seven million dollars. Wow. Um Pursuit of Happiness, second Oscar nomination for Willard Smith, three hundred and seven million, and I am legend, five hundred and eighty five Pers- million. Pursuit of Happiness is not a blockbuster movie. No, How does it make three kind of hundred million dollars? It's unbelievable. The answer is Will Smith. Yes. People I mean he was he was the definition of an A-list star. Yeah. Where people went to just see Will Smith. And that is consecutive. That's the string of movies for him. Um 
That's and, unbelievable. Uh, That's a great it, run. And it all ended run. with our worst of. With the worst of. So worst of, and I will not belabor this because I don't think either one of us really liked this movie. Um, yeah. There are things about it that that we can kind of chat about, but uh, worst of is 2008's Hancock. And some of yeah. you are thinking right now, hold up, there's way worse movies than that. You know what? You're right, and we're not going to cover them. We're going to okay. talk about Hancock, and we're going to talk about kind of the the beginning of the decline that happened after that string of successes. So yeah. 41% on Rotten Tomatoes, directed by Pete Berg, who I think makes good movies. He's figured mm-hmm. it out now how to make... He's He does all the stuff with Mark Wahlberg, right? He does Mark Wahlberg um, recent history uh, kind of tragedy movies, right? And they're pretty, pretty darn good, the ones I've seen. Patriot's uh, Day is awesome. Patriot's Day is good. Deepwater Horizon or Deep... This is a lot of fun. It, it was. Uh, mm-hmm. The uh, last Lone Ranger, good. Lone Rain? Lone Survivor. Lone Survivor. Oh, Lord. Yeah. Yes, Lone Survivor. Yeah. Um, Although Lone Ranger with Johnny Depp was a uh, tragic, recent tragic event also, <laughs> to be fair. <laughs> it was. <laughs> but yeah, no, Pete Berg's been doing those um, lately, and I, I think he's I think he's a, a, a good filmmaker, but this, not, not his finest. Uh, starring yeah. Will Smith, uh, Charlize Theron, still um, just unbelievable, still very much at the height of her powers in 2008. Yes. And uh, Jason Bateman, I think, kind of cashing in on some of that uh, Arrested Development fame. Um, mm-hmm. it, this was based on a spec script called Tonight He Comes. And it was <laughs> written by Vincent Ingo, who I've never heard of. But here's your fill-in-the-blank for this week. Uh, this script was rewritten by a future highly respected and successful TV creator showrunner okay. do could can you take a shot at naming this person or maybe the show that he created and ran um, okay I'm going to guess um, and I don't know if I've heard this at some point or if, uh or just, it just makes sense to me. I feel like I've heard it. I'm going to say Vince Gilligan. It is. No, you're right. You're right. It's okay. Vince Gilligan, which is known Who did for... did Breaking Bad? He did Breaking Bad and uh, Better Call Saul. And so the way that he kind of crafts the story and creates it has been kind of the story of these last few years. Uh, did not really, uh, really, not really up to the task in uh, in the rewrite here. Yeah. Uh, this, this movie, if you're not familiar with Hancock from 2008, tells the story of an alcoholic superhero who is despised by his community for the unnecessary damage he inflicts on the town. And that's literally the, the opening uh, handful yeah. of scenes. Um, this movie suffers... Well, let's start first with the premise. I think there's a yeah. lot of potential in that. The premise think, is great. Yeah, the first part of the movie is great. The first, the good f- first half of this movie is above average. Yeah, and I think the elevator pitch fun. and the premise of this, while I think one of the hardest things to access maybe was Will Smith as this kind of flawed, drunk, anti-hero mm-hmm. kind of thing. Even though he's out there having fun, he wasn't the, you know, the you know the hero that he's not playing the character yeah. he was in men in black or independence day. Uh, he's right. it's, it's just a, a, a very different kind of flawed person. Um, I think this movie suffers from it's, it's really kind of a direction execution storytelling type of thing. There's inconsistent mm-hmm. tone throughout. Is this a drama? Is this a comedy? What are we doing here? Cause there's really yeah. grossly comedic moments where it's trying to be this, horrific it's trying to be i think it's it's sought out to be an r-rated i was reading about this on the wikipedia page it was trying to be this r-rated edgy superhero type of thing um coming out kind of right after iron man in 2008 yeah and being the antithesis of that and they ended up cutting a lot of that stuff to make it more more approachable and and get it down to a pg-13 and so there's some there's just some things that just don't ring true as far as the story that is trying to tell. And then 
there's this pivot midway through them that I'm not going to give away where you, you kind of find out other things and there's this kind of yeah. shoehorned in backstory uh, yeah, that and mythology just, mythology and, thing that yeah. just was unnecessary. Just let this guy be this guy. And yeah. um, I, I just think it suffers from, from a handful of problems like that. The, the second half of this movie is, is really terrible. Um, yeah. Very. Uh, it's, and it's almost unwatchable. I would say the second half uh, for something that had a lot of potential. The, the, the fights, the CGI fights are pretty bad. There's just, yeah, there's just a lot of things. And I just don't think it succeeds at the humor. It didn't know what it wanted to be. And right. there's, it's not playful where it needs to be. So it's, it, 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 it's too serious yeah. at times. It's just not, it's just, it's just not good. Um, yeah. I agree completely. Yeah. It, it's, but I think what he's trying to do, the performance that Will is trying to give, I think is he's giving it his all. He's still doing everything he can yeah. to be the Will Smith and that we've known. And he's the best part of the movie. He is the best part of the movie. Yeah. But, but in that movie, it's not saying a whole lot. <laughs> no. And I wish, I wish there was another version of this premise. I think Deadpool, in a different way, does is successful at things that this yeah. was trying to be. Um, yeah. Which Deadpool has the source material. It so, does. You know, you know, it does. It's got, it's had its chance to find its fan base and stretch its legs and yeah. stuff. And trying to be wholly you know. original, I think in this space is really tough. Now here's what I found interesting. This thing had, you know, huge budget, $150 million budget. This stinking movie made $624 million worldwide yeah. and is the fourth highest grossing film of 2008. This yeah. is what's insane. So it's another part of, financially, it's a part of that string we just read. Critically, this is where things really start taking a turn. Right, and 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 I agree. This is, this is a success, uh, but it's not... Um, so here's what's crazy. I was reading about this. So, again, it's part of that string of 11 films, like you said, but critically this starts to, to take a dive. This is the fifth film to open on July 4th weekend for Will Smith in that oh, run. Wow. Fifth film on July 4th, and it's the biggest opening he's ever had. Yeah, because he had a track record at that point. Yeah, you know? <laughs> and this is Pete Berg's biggest opening of his entire career. So again, wow. it's you're just banking on this Will Smith juggernaut, and yeah. uh, and it, and it carries through. And people people went to see uh, you know really subpar movies. And I will say after this, you still see that string of financial success, but increasingly fewer returns. So after this, he he just starts dropping seven pounds. Did you ever see Seven Pounds? Yeah, with Rosario Dawson. Right? Uh, yeah, it's it's too depressing. It's yeah, it's good, but it's depressing. depressing. And then it's just downhill from there. He does the M Night Shyamalan After Earth, which never saw. Oof. Focus, which I hear was above average, but I never saw. Concussion, I never saw. Collateral Beauty, never saw. Gemini Man, just from last year. Yeah. Ang Lee, never saw. So like all of a sudden, we talk about that the beginning of that front run. We've seen every yeah. one of them, we, yeah. you know, and then immediately it just you hit this string. It just shows you how fickle the Hollywood uh, machine can be. I will yeah. say this. I'm actually looking forward to his next role. Do you know what the next thing he's starring in? I don't. He will be in uh, King Richard coming out next year where he will play Richard Williams, the father of tennis phenoms, Venus and Serena. Oh, and it's going to be about okay. them growing up. So dramatic turn. Yeah. And he's reached that stage that Tom Hanks has already reached, which is he only plays real people. Um, right. Hey, get your Oscars. It Very does. Oscar no, Tom noms. Hanks plays real people and just gets Oscar noms. And, yeah. uh, and, and I think that's, and typewriters. Yes. Yes. But I think that's, I think that's where Will's going. But, um, yeah. uh, anyway, uh, Hancock is not worth your time. Um, we do it uh, because we do our diligent work every week to yes review the worst of so that you don't have to. Is that why we do it? 
Um, I think so. I think that, and just to sort of explore the, you know, because obviously if someone, if it's someone were the top, if the the subject that we're talking about, whether it's a band, a person, a TV show, whatever, um, they clearly are famous enough to be worthy of discussing, and I think it's interesting to look at their shortcomings as well, you know? Um, yeah. Because, and Will Smith is a really, a, I mean, is really maybe one of the best examples of that because it's hit, 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 hit. Oh, and we don't like you anymore. <laughs> you know, like commercially. Everyone still loves Will Smith, but um, but yeah, he is not the guarantee. And honestly, I would almost say the opposite has happened now to where like Gemini Man, he has a, he, had, he had that movie he did on Netflix too. What was that? Blink or uh, not Blink. Blink or something. Something of that nature. I, I'll pull it back up. Bright. 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 That's what it was. Um, uh, Brink was a rollerblading movie from the Disney Channel original movie days. Um, okay. but, uh, <laughs> but now it's to the point where I see a trailer for one of his movies. I'm like, Ooh, that doesn't look so good. Or even if it looks good, I'm like, Oh, that's probably going to be bad because now Will Smith is known for almost known for being in bad movies, which is crazy. I think he's because, taken a 10 year lull and yeah. I think he'll come back. I think. Tom Hanks didn't have as long a run, but Tom Hanks had a downward spiral there where all of yeah. a sudden there just weren't the movies. I think it was after Catch Me If You Can. He was in Terminal, and then it just mm-hmm. Larry Crown and all this stuff that just didn't work. And yeah. so, and now he's come full circle and he's back up. I, I hope the same thing will happen to Will in his 50s. He's, he's in his early 50s now. Yeah. I think the roles will adjust. And if he cannot, yeah. if he's willing to not be number one action star if he's willing mm-hmm. to you know to to take the work that's there i think he can be a bankable star we say as his next role is literally called king richard and he's richard <laughs> <laughs> no you're right you know <laughs> um but uh but either way i i love the guy um if you're not a familiar if you're not familiar with his work um or maybe you're more familiar with his down you're just familiar with his downward spiral Go back and visit those uh, glory years because uh, they are um, they're they're glorious. Uh, Men in Black, I yeah. Am Legend, I Robot, ID yeah. Four. Gosh, you know, we said I said I was not going to call it that. I called it that ID Four for the first time ever when we did the Think Movie Presidents episode. That's and that's all you I call it now. I call it ID Four now. To be fair, that saved a lot of time. Independence Day, ID Four. That's pretty good. Men in Black, MIB, not so much. Yeah, I love that part in the movie where Bill Pullman is giving a. It is Pullman, right? It's not the other one. It's that's Pullman. I used to get Pullman yeah, yeah, and, yeah. and Paxton. Paxton. Next yeah, yeah. So it's Bill Pullman, and Pullman's giving this uh, speech, you know, and mm. we will show them that this is our ID four. That's my. <laughs> um, that's my favorite part. <laughs> right. <laughs> It is. It's. It's. It it's so hard. It's, it's so hard to brings, say. Brings a tear to your eye. Yeah. I mean, I just think. I think back to you know um, the founding fathers. You know, saying this, we declare our independence on ID four. Yes. <laughs> you know. Um. Okay. On that note, I want to thank everybody for joining us today, and for subscribing and rating and reviewing. As we always say, uh, we do this because we like doing it this is uh the conversation we had at our desks and now we do it in front of uh microphones so that uh so that you all can enjoy it but we really uh we really appreciate all the listeners that we have um and it helps us out if you subscribe to it in your in the podcast application uh give us a rating uh give us some feedback check us out in all the normal places apple spotify google stitcher youtube all those places, email us, bowopod at gmail.com or on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram at bowopod. Thank you. Yeah. Yes, and we had an email last week, Jason. Um, Ooh. That uh, also is a little bit of a, uh, gives us um, some corrections on a, on a recent episode. And it is from a listener, CJ, um, the lovely wife of one Wes Forbes, our. Uh, the who did the artwork for our podcast um she uh she's a listener of the show and uh we have when i see her she likes to give um you know hey she's very very smart very smart woman very well read 
very eloquent. And she, a lot of times when we talked, like, hey, you guys said this is actually, you know, she'll give me some correction. I'll be like, well, I'm not going to mention it on the show until you email it. So um, <laughs> email it. She did. She says, hi, friends. Nike is the goddess of victory, and her name was yelled out to announce a battle victory to the people of Marathon after the messenger ran the 26 miles. And she gave us a link. Um, she sourced her correction, which I really appreciate. Yes. Um, and uh, she says she thinks that may have been what we were trying to remember at some point during our Just Do It discussion um, during, I don't remember exactly where the conversation went there, but um, she gave us some extra info there uh, in our commercial catchphrases. We were talking about Just Do It and some of Nike's history. Yes. And there's another tidbit from CJ. We appreciate it. Um, yeah, Nike, the goddess of victory. I did not know that. Um, me likey, that Nike fact. Sorry. Wow. She also said, um, I really love the podcast and thought I'd join in the process instead of just yelling, you're wrong, in my vehicle. Uh, yeah. Which we appreciate. I do appreciate that. I, I, f- I hope that most of our listeners just yell, you're wrong, at the yeah. at the radio, at their earbuds, uh, wherever Even when we're not. Yeah, just <laughs> yell. Yeah, no. I, just, I, I think that's how they listen. That's the best yeah. accompaniment. Yeah, interactive theater, you know, like a like a showing of the Rocky Horror Picture Show. Yeah, yeah, that's that's what. But we with have to less do. lingerie, still some lingerie, but admittedly less. Yeah, um, certainly. Thanks by to the, the band of. of <laughs> okay. Yes, yes. <laughs> thanks to the band Amiga out of the Charlotte, North Carolina area for the music throughout the episode. To Wes Forbes, um, uh, husband of CJ. Uh, for our podcast artwork and most of all thank you guys for listening to best of or stuff go get jiggy with it This is a story all about how my life got flipped, turned upside down. I'd like to take a minute, just sit right there. I'll tell you how they came to the prince of a town called Bel Air. In West Philadelphia, <laughs> born and raised on the playground is where I spent most of my days. Chilling out, maxing and relaxing all cool, and I was shooting some b-ball outside of the school. <laughs> when a couple of guys who were up to no good started making trouble in my neighborhood. I got in one little fight and my mom got scared. She said, you're moving with your auntie and uncle in Bel Air. I whistled for a cab and when it came near, the license plate said fresh and I had dice in the mirror. If anything, I could say that this cab was rare, but I thought now, forget it. Yo, homes in Bel Air. I pulled up to a house about seven or eight and I yelled to the cabbie, yo, homes, smell you later. Looked in my kingdom, I was finally there to sit on my throne as the prince of Bel Air. <laughs> <laughs>